Bush. I'm sorry. People think that Tourette's is this swearing disorder. <laughs> but what they don't see is that <laughs> there's so much more behind that. It's almost like just the tip of the iceberg. I'm stuck in I'm doing this with my arm. The most help I had was Matthew, definitely. I don't think I could have gotten through this without him. Sorry. <laughs> my name is Bryony and I have Tourette's syndrome. Tourette's syndrome is a nervous system problem in the brain. So it's when um, signals misfire and they cause us to do tics, which is involuntary movements. I started having tics at the ages of 12 or 13. I began to develop tics. It started with an inhale of breath, so it was very, um, it kind of sounded like a hiccup almost. Mm. It was only flagged to me that that was a tic when I started going to my psychiatrist for my mental health. They've had a huge impact in my life. It's kind of like my life's just been flipped over and I've had to take everything on so much more than I had to before. How many eggs do we need? We need five eggs. Five. Butter. People think that Tourette's is this swearing disorder. They think swearing is the only part of it. <laughs> but what they don't see is that there's so much more behind that. It's almost like just the tip of the iceberg is the tics. <laughs> How did you discover bacon helps? It would just give me like a creative outlet for my tics and it just let me be creative as well as have like a positive environment to let out my tics. It's almost like that distraction. Like yeah. Keeps your mind sort of distracted from sort of everything that's going on. When she did tell me, it was just kind of... Sorry. Okay, we're... We've now got this, this thing. Oh. How do we deal with it together? This is not on me this time. Yeah, that's true. Seeing everything she's gone through, it just makes me so proud to still be <laughs> happy and smiley. But you get these other episodes where they are scary and they are damaging to myself. I end up with a lot of injuries sometimes. I don't want to hurt anyone around me, but I, my boyfriend sometimes gets punched. <laughs> Bush. Sorry, I say that laughing because if I don't laugh about it, it becomes an, a different situation. It can actually be quite diff difficult for me to be in the kitchen just because there's so many things like knives, I could really hurt myself or I could hurt someone else. If it's a bad day, then yeah, my tics might be more active and I might throw some flour or some Does, eggs. It can get a little bit messy yeah. and Definitely things don't can. always go where they're supposed to. Just pour it in, scrape it out. Mm. No? No. Okay. We know it's involuntary and we know that I don't mean it that I'm doing and we do just laugh about the things that happen. <laughs> Since it was a thing and I was diagnosed, I think having gone through that process it has made me such a stronger person than I was before. As soon as my doctors wanted me to film my tics and to see how they reacted, that's when I started posting them online as well. <laughs> if others have made me feel less lonely, then I hope that I can do that for someone else as well. So what are tics? Beans. You always get the people online that say you're faking, that you're not, this is all put on for a show but knowing that at least one person has seen that and said, oh, that happens to me as well. It's not just a swearing disability. It's not just inappropriate words. It's actually a thing. That's exciting. Doing all these things on social media, putting herself out there, because I know how difficult it is for her. It just gives me such a sense of pride in her mm. as a person. Sorry. <laughs> The most help I've had after my Tourette's diagnosis was Matthew, definitely. He's been my saviour and I don't think I could have gotten through this without him. We've had lots of conversations about how my Tourette's affects me and how my Tourette's affects him, but we've always come to the conclusion that it's not one of us in this. We're in this together. The biggest thing I've learned about myself is how strong I am. I've been stuck in I'm doing this with my arm for about half an hour now. I've also loved becoming like this advocate online for Tourette's syndrome, for mental health and helping other people accept themselves. 
I'm definitely surprised of how much I've grown as a person even over this past year. I will continue to be surprised myself because I love that feeling of thinking I can't do it and proving myself wrong. Let's start again and when this time I'll record it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> We first noticed that I had small ticks when I was around seven. And when I was about 14, it kind of all blew up and I got a ton of ticks at once. I started just introducing them into my videos. I went from 400k to a million followers in three days. Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to be making a cake with Ruby. My Tourette's went viral, but people accuse me of thinking Baking is something that really triggers my ticks, so it's going to be a challenge today. <laughs> my name's Sarah Beth. Um, I'm 16 and I have Tourette's syndrome and FND. We first noticed that I had small ticks when I was around seven, and then over the years, I gradually got more and more. <laughs> and when I was about 14 in 2019 it kind of all blew up and I got a ton of ticks at once and it just spiralled and over 2020 it got to where it is now and that's when I got diagnosed. Yep. If you don't know what FND is, it stands for Functional Neurological Disorder. I want to teach you a few things about the condition. It's a neurological condition. It can cause tremors, paralysis, weakness, seizures, ticks, sensory issues, blindness, deafness, and so many more things. Uh, my FND symptoms started when I was in year 10 and it started off with the fainting and um, the, the small seizures when we realised that there was something else going on because I was getting all these symptoms and I started getting paralysis. It, it got pretty debilitating quite quickly, especially in 2021. I just had like a massive flare up where um, I was paralyzing in a wheelchair for two months. So sometimes I couldn't move anything apart from my eyes. I think at the start it was, it was really difficult adjusting. Um, but now we've got a diagnosis and we're getting used to everything. Um, I think I'm really proud of how she's been so resilient and come out the other side um, really confident and everything she's achieved as a result of all the issues that she's had to deal with. When my tics kind of started getting worse and they started getting beyond the point of being able to hide them, like early 2020, I started just introducing them into my videos and I kind of made some funny videos and then it kind of accidentally blew up. Like my first video that went viral was just me talking about things I can't do because of my Tourette's. So I went from 400K to a million followers in three days, which was just completely insane. There were a lot of people who just said it was fake because immediately people look at it and think, that's weird, I don't like it. People say I'm faking a lot. These are some of the comments that I've had. It's fake, if everyone stopped reacting her, to her, she would just stop. Just a lot of comments saying that I'm faking for attention. <laughs> and people saying that I'm just doing it for the followers. I understand to some extent because it can look a bit, it can look a bit crazy because it's crazy how the brain can send signals like that and do everything involuntarily, but I guess that's why I posted it, is to show that that is my reality. <laughs> and if people don't believe that, it's it's okay. It's not just what you see on the videos, because mm. it, it's just like, that's just the tip of the iceberg for us. And people see a lot of the comedy videos or um, you know, the awareness videos, but yeah. there's like such a massive amount as well that goes on. Yeah, because that's just a little aspect of yeah. the day. I'm just really proud of how she's um, achieved everything and she's come out of the shell and she's raised, raising awareness and making the best of the situation. My main hobby is uh, doing music. So uh, I sing, I play piano, guitar, ukulele, and I write my own music as well. <laughs> Uh, because music gives me a break from my conditions, especially with Tourette's. I've always loved writing music because it's kind of a way to get my feelings out because in song lyrics you can you can make them super metaphorical and it, it's kind of a way to just rant about everything that's going on. 
I've done a couple of baking videos before. I've done one with my mum um, and I've, I've made a couple things, challenges with eggs, <laughs> but it'll be nice to try a challenge with my friend. <laughs> um, I think we're gonna try and make a cake and see how it goes. I've known Zara for four years. We were like 12 when we met. I've heard about like Tourette before I met her, but um, I've never like actually met anyone with it. And it was something that we kind of dealt with together. Yeah, that you were fun. kind of there when I developed yeah, it. Like so when it first started getting bad. We learned along the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be making a cake we're with baking. Rudy. Yeah, we put that in first, yeah. It's fine. So, <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Usually when she has ticks, if it's like you're falling over, I'll help you. Yeah. But otherwise you just don't really say much. But if you do, I usually joke about it <laughs> quite <laughs> it, a lot. Yeah, it makes it easier to yeah. it makes makes me less embarrassed. Because I get you... insulted quite a lot. <laughs> I think the most difficult part of having Tourette's was getting over that at the start and learning just to accept it, accept the fact that I can't control it and that it's okay and it doesn't have to define who I am, I can be me separately and then just have Tourette's and I can post about it but that's not entirely who I am. <laughs>
Tourette's definitely affects my balance because my head is constantly moving and it makes it quite hard to keep walking in a straight line. Being visually impaired affects my Tourette's because I found that now I can't see as much. I don't tend to tick offensive things about people so it's actually quite handy. People in public tend to stare a lot. I tend to just ignore people when they try and treat me differently because at the end of the day, even if they're being judgmental, I still have to live with the symptoms. So guys, we're going to carry on with what we've been doing over the last couple of weeks, looking into um, our darkroom work and our um, work on zines. My tutors and my classmates are amazing about my tics. They hey, know it. when it's appropriate to reply to them and <laughs> when it isn't. Um, they can also tell when I'm getting stressed out about it, so they can help me calm down. My Tourette's definitely impacts the way I use a computer because quite often I'll like hit the keyboard or yeah. delete things that I'm not meant to delete or yeah. so we've open had that tabs a few times. I can't. We've had that a few times, yeah. haven't we? We're like, oh no, delete that, or close that, <laughs> don't undo and things, yeah. The most unusual thing I think I've heard um, is... Nice Derry. There you go, that's probably one of them. <laughs> <laughs> it just pops out. An elephant never forgets. <laughs> uh, one of the really common misconceptions about Tourette's is that it's just swearing. Actually, what, only 10% of people with Tourette's syndrome hey. have coprolalia, which is the swearing tick. I've got drugs in my bag. I think a lot of people make generalisations about me because of my tics. People assume that I'm really confident and outgoing because I'm just constantly shouting, but actually I have a lot of anxiety over it and it definitely gets into your head a lot. I really hope for Cece's future that she carries on making more and more people aware of her Tourette's and what Tourette's are and things like that. My general ambitions for the future are to maybe go to university or um, spread more awareness about Tourette's syndrome. Definitely feels really empowering posting about Tourette's syndrome on TikTok because I've got so many lovely messages from people saying that I've helped them understand. I hope that as I get older my Tourette's calms down a bit or I can try and start some medication for it, but if it doesn't then I'll just have to take it as it comes. What are you looking at? People think I'm faking my Tourette's. Sometimes there's things I say. Ah, take your tops off! That I'm just like, I'd never say that. <laughs> I'd never say that if that was, if it was me. Who said that? She has been told that she's possessed. There are of course going to be loads of people that don't believe me or think that I'm faking it for some sort of attention. But there's kind of a point where you don't need to care what other people say. <laughs> We start with a, what I hope to be an yeah. easy one, mm -hmm. which, could you introduce yourself? My name is Nicole and I'm 14 and I have Tourette's syndrome. Before my tick started, I had a life like every other 13 year old. Life is so much more different than what it was. Sometimes I can't do certain things, but I try not to think about it. There's certain moments where you can be really scared because you have no idea what's going to happen, you have no idea when it's going to happen because it's just, it comes out the blue, you, you just never know. Oh no. Someone is taking over my body, so I can't control what I say or what I do. So I started to develop tics about 16 months ago. And it was literally overnight, the week of her birthday, and it just progressively got worse. I was worried because I didn't know what it was. <laughs> when it first started, I was really confused. Because I never really knew what Tourette's was to start with. It's like if you shake a can of pop and like, you know, when you pop it open, it like fizzes up. That is pretty much what it feels like. If you hold in all your tics, you can get pains in your chest. I think the first thing that people think when they think of Tourette's is swearing. It's the end of the world! And that's not the whole thing. It's physical as well. At the start it was just neck and hand movements, now it's just everything. <laughs> sometimes it's my hair, sometimes I literally grab my hair and like, try to rip it out. So I try and put stuff in front of me to block me from hurting myself. <laughs> I 
I didn't realise that's what Tourette's was. I just was like, well, she can't help herself doing it. Sometimes there's things I say that I'm just like, I'd never say that. Don't stare at me, you spoiled Who said that? I'd never say that if that was, if it was me. One of the first ones that she came out with was saying she was Madeleine McCann, and that was one of her first ticks, and that's a tick that's never gone. The same as the ha-ha, the same as the whistling. Ha-ha! There's really rude things that I've said about my friends that they know I would never say to them. You dirty beggar. <laughs> it's the being fat for me. <gasps> so it's just like the opposite of what I am. I can feel just like a second person. I've hurt myself in different ways, like I've punched my chest, um, scratched on my hands, my head, made my head breathe, um, grabbed on my hair, tried to rip it out, um, punched on my knees, scratched all up my knees. It can be really, really dangerous and it can be really scary to watch. Maybe, shall I do this? The trauma of of the Tourette's to her brain is causing her to then have the FND where her hands lock into place, her feet lock into place. FND stands for Functional Neurological Disorder, but it's almost like for Nicole, because of the Tourette's, the FND kicks in as almost a, like to try and restart her brain, trying to kickstart it from what it's doing. It. I'll have a double cheeseburger and a some fries. <laughs> the one way that me and my family deal with it is by laughing. No, you're not a flower. I'd find it really funny. <laughs> no, that's not how they do it. But everyone else will laugh about it as well, so that's kind of the way that we deal with it. They're in you lady. Brilliant. <laughs> I mean, she can come out with some really hilarious stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't even like Brilliant. <laughs> I decided to post about my Tourette's one day and kind of went from there. I think the first time I started posting it, I got a lot of support. And of course, trolls are going to be there. There are, of course, going to be loads of people that don't believe me or think that I'm faking it for some sort of attention. Okay, so you start again. But there's kind of a point where you don't need to care what other people say. So if they want to believe that I'm faking it, Okay, that's fine. There's been loads of people that have texted me saying thank you so much for making me feel more comfortable with my Tourette's. So it's, it's nice that we can all talk about it. The main reason was going on and trying to build awareness and I kind of wanted to give people the reality of what Tourette's was and share that actually it's, it's not just swearing. Even if I reached out to one person, I just wanted to let them realise that that's what it was so that if she did get seen somewhere and she was ticking, she wouldn't be judged for it. Today I'll be going to a dance class. It helps my tics and when I hear the music and move my body, I feel free. Thank you. I'm aware that Nicole has tics. However, I haven't really noticed any while she's at dancing. I think Nicole forgets because she's concentrating and she's having fun while she's dancing. She's just able to be herself. God, I'm getting emotional about it. Um, she's just able to be happy without having the dreads. It's just lovely to be able to see her be herself and not have to worry or think or feel anything because she's concentrating so much. She can just be Nicole. <laughs> Sorry. There's a lot more to having Tourette's than just a few ticks. The one thing I'd want people to know is that you don't need to tick 24-7 to have Tourette's. I think that's the one thing that people believe. Like, there's some days where I do not tick whatsoever, and there's some days where I tick all the time. My hopes for the future is that my ticks get better, or they slowly go away, or there's a cure found. Hopefully, but if not, then just get on with it really. <laughs> you know, it's just something that is part of me now.